Exceeding Expectations, episode 41. Welcome to the podcast where we give you ideas on how you can exceed your customers' expectations with the end result, hopefully, that you'll be getting more referrals, testimonials, and more rebookings. This week's episode is with the lovely Welsh tones of Dillis Guyan. She's going to tell you how you can attract more business clients, how you can find them. We're going to find out a lot more about that in just a a few seconds time. If you do like this podcast, please do leave a review for us. That's really how we're able to spread and get the word to to far more people. Uh, So please do leave a review on iTunes or Stitcher or Spotify. And if you do have any ideas for future guests, if you've got any comments about anything that any of the guests have said, then please do pop in to our Facebook group, which is called Exceeding Expectations, and leave a comment in there. This week's show, Dilis Gayan. Exceeding expectations, my guest this week is Dillis Guyan. How are you, Dillis? I'm really good, thank you, Tony. Although, don't we always say that? And I, I was um, at my mastermind group in Paris last week for two days. And in that room, there was a lady who had the most horrendous cold and cough. And up to date, I know that nine of us have actually caught him from it. Um, however, the show must go on and I'm really excited <laughs> to be here today. Mind you, that sounds very nice. A mastermind group in Paris, that's uh, that's a bit different. It was brilliant. It was utterly brilliant. And luckily, had I didn't uh, book to fly back until Friday afternoon, and we were finished on Thursday evening. So I was able to spend the morning with some friends just doing that trailing around Paris thing, you know, and um, having stopping and having coffee and some lunch. It was just so good. So does your mastermind group, do you always sort of every now and then do you go to a, an exotic location or is it, what's the format? No, it's always in Paris. So ah, but... it's once a quarter, two days in Paris. Um, yeah, so we don't go anywhere exotic, but it's a really great supportive group. Um, and, and and in fact, in terms of exceeding expectations, it has blown me away with mm. with what, with the support um, that's there in this group. Well, actually, that's a, just it's a subject we've never touched upon in this um, series so far. So, yeah, why don't you? I would imagine there's people listening who maybe have no idea of what a mastermind group even is. So, do you want to just briefly explain your what you how you found mastermind groups to be and how they've helped you? Right now, I've, I've actually referred to mastermind group uh, because. The two day event was in fact learning and masterminding, but it is, mm. it is actually a two year program, uh, that I have joined called Leverage. And it's about mm. me taking my business to the next level. And mm. within it is this, is this masterminding element. But what mm. I absolutely love about it is that, and, and this is really my basic thoughts about this kind of thing. And I, and I talk about this a lot when I deliver leadership programs because I do sales programs and leadership programs, but the power of the team is far greater than the sum of each individual. Mm. And the just the insights that you get from masterminding and stretching your thinking and other people stretching your thinking, mm. that you actually leave with your horizons widened. Um, it, it gives you the confidence to stretch out of your comfort zone because that's really where the growth happens is when you mm. come out of your your comfort zone. Um, and I'm a, a lifelong learner. I'm an implementer as well, but I'm a lifelong learner because I always feel to give the best to my clients, I have to be top of my game, you know, mm. to, to share things with them. And really for the listeners, it's something that I would advocate to everyone is that you get on a learning path with other people you know, who can stretch you mm-hmm. and take you to, to where you want to be. And is this the first mastermind group you've been in or have you been in previous ones? Um, I have been in other groups, but I haven't, I haven't master, done masterminding at this level. 
so this mm. is this is probably my first I'm saying probably this is my first experience at this level mm. and it's been very rewarding it sounds like it's been brilliant absolutely um and I'm just I haven't been in it that long um mm. but there's all sorts of, of other opportunities to mastermind so we have um what we call the pod and there are only a few people in the pod and and you go online to do that so the one last week was live in Paris, but you but this online um, opportunity is for us to. It's the same people in the pod, and you just brainstorm and mastermind and help each other get over any kind of obstacles, and then to just stretch. Mm. And so, so going back a little bit, so you you do I know you do sales leadership programs and so mm. on, but what what is your title? What what would you say you actually do? Well, I suppose my official title, if you look um, on LinkedIn and different things that I do, I'm an international um, award-winning sales and marketing leader, coach, speaker, and podcaster. So that's my official title. So I work with business owners who are selling to bigger businesses um, or want to, um, Mm -hmm. and, and I help them to attract, convert, retain, and um get that right mindset around mm. getting those ideal clients on a consistent basis and that's the key really it's the consistency it's mm. to avoid the peaks and troughs of cash flow um, mm. and really getting people to see that cause, because many businesses are, are, are playing small I kind of I hate that phrase really but they're, they're selling small projects um, and really, there's opportunities in corporate. And when I talk about corporate, I'm not talking about the big international corporates. You know, I'm talking about companies, maybe 10, 20, 30, 50, 100, 150 employees. Um, there are massive opportunities there for business owners to sell into those types of companies where they, they will be paid promptly. They will be valued because the, the smaller businesses have got a passion about what they do. Mm. And so often they think that they're up against, that they don't have a chance to get into bigger companies because, you know, it's bigger companies who go into bigger companies. And actually mm. that's not right. That, that, that's, mm. uh, you know, I can blow that myth because actually I've been running my business since 2000 and uh, 2000 actually, so 19 years this year. Mm-hmm. And in the beginning, I was from a standing start, no contacts, no agency, no referrals, nothing. I just put my business plan together, set my goals and, and made a list of the ideal clients that I wanted to work with, which I decided were going to be the large financial services companies. And I started to <laughs> literally with the telephone and had got a, a contract with Ally Dunbar, which is now Zurich, in my very first month. And I would never have dreamt in a million years that I could have gone into companies like that. And I continued mm. and worked with Barclays, Barclay Card, Aviva, HSBC, um, Thornton's Chocolates, pharmaceutical companies, heritage sites. So it can be done. Mm. So I'm really, I'm on a mission, Tony, to help people realize that actually they can, they can really enjoy earning a bigger income by selling to these bigger corporate businesses. Not the ones I mentioned necessarily. It doesn't Mm. have to be as big as that. And so when you go into these companies, how is it you're helping them? In what way are you sort of um, doing some sort of course with just some of the employees or the management or how does it normally It's both. So I work with the sales teams, helping them to increase their revenue. Mm -hmm. And I work with the sales leaders who really need to be instrumental in developing the people to to maximize their efficiency and Mm -hmm. and maximize their skills and their talents to achieve what they want to achieve in in their life and in the business. Mm -hmm. And so you said, are you still working mostly with large financial companies or is it, um, is it different now? 
It's different now because I was flying all the way, all around the world. I've worked in Europe and Canada and America and South America. And about six years ago, I realized I was absolutely shattered with the traveling. Um, mm. I think I'm 27, but you know, your listeners can't see <laughs> me, but they may see the picture on there on how, however you host this. Uh, I'm clearly not 27 and yeah. it sounds really glamorous. And, and I loved it. I have to say, I loved every moment of it, but I was shattered with the traveling mm. and I thought, I can't keep doing this. So, in fact, I changed my business model and I now bring my skills and knowledge to the SME market. So, mm. smaller businesses who are selling to bigger businesses or want to. Um, and, and I run workshops, I've got pri- private coaching clients, and I've now got an online program which was blood, sweat and tears, I have to say, gosh, I'd rather get into uh, sell to corporates mm. than, than do this online. However, I have cracked it and uh, it's, you know, I'm on the first rung of that really. And, and what does the online program offer and who, who is it aimed at? Well, it's, it's aimed at the SMEs. Um, mm. It's just a basic program. I'm working on the next phase of it. I'm actually building it, building that program out. Um, and it is that foundational stuff that people absolutely need to know because what I see is too many business owners who are expert in what they do, but they're not mm. expert in bringing in clients on a consistent basis. And mm. so they struggle with the peaks and troughs of cash mm. flow. And sadly, you know, many of them go out of business as my dad did when I was only 16, which was mm. very traumatic indeed. Um, mm. And I think, to be honest, that's the foundation of, of what I do because I'm so committed to, to giving business owners the steps to, mm. to be able to implement and to be able to bring that revenue in on a consistent basis so that they, they fall back in love with their business again like they did when they very first started and, and that they feel that, you know, that feeling of satisfaction and achievement rather mm. than the worry and the stress of, of this cash flow problem and how they're going to pay their bills and their mortgage and their employees' payroll and so on. So, yes, mm. I help them with the, the, the online program. Is, it's the basic steps, but as I say, I'm building that out to, to make it into a, a more substantial offering. And how, uh, how, do you, how have you found it different working with large financial corporations to, to SMEs? How different has that been? I would say the biggest difference is that the large corporations have got large sales teams. They've got sales departments, man- um, marketing departments, training departments, where the smaller SME generally doesn't, well, they, they don't have these huge sales teams. Um, but the other difference I see is that even in the large organizations, despite the fact that they've got all of this support, sadly, the sales training isn't as good as it could be. And mm. when I say that, what I mean is that they will, they will train a new salesperson and give them a load of product training. Mm. And they give them a small amount of sales training mm. and virtually no prospecting training. Mm. So these poor salespeople are going out there. If they're lucky, they get a, a day out with the manager and they're left to their own devices. And many of them go out and they're still talking product far too soon. Mm. And, of course, buyers are not interested in product or service or your company or you. What they're interested in is what that product or service will do for them. And they, they want to work with someone who can bring insights and value to their business to help them achieve their goals and objectives. So that's one of the big differences I see with the, with the uh, big companies. Mm. Um, the, for the smaller companies, often they don't get very, any training at all. So, so, you know, they are expert in what they do, mm. but they also need to be good at sales and marketing because it's customers are the lifeblood of your business. Mm. It seems like what you said before about the, um, you know, especially the bigger companies 
just they hire new staff and then send them out on their way. And it seems it's such a fundamental error. I mean, it just seems crazy. I mean, they're they're going to suffer so much in sales by doing something like that. Oh, the impact's massive, Tony. The, yeah. um, there were some recent statistics that came out from Miller Hyman that uh, showed that 18.6% of salespeople will leave their organization every year. Mm. So after five years, that's nearly 100%. Now, that's not the mm. same people necessary. But that churn is so costly to the business because they've got, not only have they got the hiring costs, They've then got the, the cost of the customer possibly going elsewhere because they're not being looked after by mm. that uh, salesperson who was looking after them. And then you've got the internal costs of other people maybe having to pick up that business and then they're not as effective doing their own. Mm. So the ripple effect of, of these salespeople leaving is huge. And then on top of that... When they bring a new person in, the other statistics that I was reading show that it takes up to 10 and a half months to get a new salesperson fully effective. And then if you tie that in with like salespeople leaving after 80, um, 18 and a half months, mm. then the, the financial impact is huge, huge. So- so what they save on paying people like you to do the training it will, will, will save them a fortune you know, for what it oh, costs. Absolutely. And, and, you know, that's a really great point because I remember, and this was a number of years ago, but it's an example I, I use a lot. A company I went into and they, I was actually doing some, I was looking to do some leadership training. And I asked them how they were doing the training at that point and they were doing it internally And it was very little, I have to say. Mm. Um, And I said, so tell me what you, you know, ideally, what would you like your business to look like? And what are your biggest challenges? Mm. And they told me that they were having this huge turnover of staff. And I said, so what's the impact of that? And we talked about the cost of advertising, bringing in CVs, HR had to sift through, select bring people in for interview, select a person, and then put them into um, back through training and put them back into this environment of low morale. Mm -hmm. And when I asked them how much it cost to recruit one new person and how many people were leaving each month and we multiplied it up and then multiplied by 12 to give an Mm -hmm. annual figure, it was astronomical. Like mm. astronomical. So to bring me in was a no-brainer, really. Mm. Yeah, um, absolutely. And, and the results that we achieved were, well, they increased the corporate sales 12-fold. Mm. Uh, Dillis, I know you, that you have a, a podcast. I mean, you know, I was a, a guest uh, on your podcast. Mm. And how has your, how's your podcast helped your business and how do you use it for your business? I don't know how much it's helping my business as such. Um, I know my diary is absolutely chock-a-block full. Mm. And I think what it's doing, it's giving me visibility. Mm-hmm. It's giving me credibility um, as an expert in my field because I've been doing this, although I've only been running my business for, for nearly 20 years. I've been in sales for 30 years because I was a financial advisor, then a field sales manager, then I was regional director. Mm. Um where we won loads of awards. and um, But it, it gives you a, a greater reach. Mm. And I, you know, you asked me about exceeding expectations and it's one of the things I can do to help get my message out in a bigger way to people to help them to start to put these pra- best practices in place to help mm. them to grow their business and increase their sales. Mm. And for those people who are listening who have no idea what your podcast is, do you want to uh, tell us a little bit about your podcast and when it's released and so on? Yeah, it's um, it's called Inspired Selling. Mm-hmm. It's the same name as my free Facebook group, if anybody wants to join that, um, mm-hmm. Inspired Selling. Yeah. And uh, I have interviewed some 
absolutely amazing people, you included, I have to say, Tony, <laughs> it was a brilliant, 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 brilliant uh, podcast with you as a guest. And I've interviewed people like uh, Jeb Blunt, who's massive in America, mm-hmm. written many, many books, and is a real thought leader in the B2B, the business-to-business selling space. Um uh, Tony Hughes, Mark Schaefer, um, the lady Tamara Skank from Miller Hyman. I get all of my insights from her. So mm-hmm. some really top class people, but also some people who have gone. There was one guy I interviewed, um, Jay Allen, his name was called, and he went from the, from battlefield to boardroom. Mm -hmm. So he was actually in the forces and then went into left through injury. Great story. And then set up his business. And he is like turning over multiple seven figures now. So Mm -hmm. some really interesting people with some really practical strategies, um, you know, of how to generate good corporate business. Mm -hmm. And where do you see the podcast going over the next sort of year or couple of years? Well, that's a really great question, Tony, because um, as part of me growing my business and expanding, um, Mm. if I go back a step, I actually was doing my podcast every week. Mm. But because I have the podcast transcribed and then um, the audio goes onto iTunes, the video goes onto uh, YouTube and the transcription and the audio goes out to my subscriber list. It was just mm. getting too much. I just didn't have the time. So mm. I have hired there's, there's somebody who does all that tech stuff for me. Technology and I are not best friends. We're just distant <laughs> acquaintances. Mm. And um, so I've hired another VA who can help me to to do to sort all of that out and other work that I have to release me to do more of the things that that I love doing and the things that I'm good at rather Mm. than the stuff that I absolutely hate Mm. and I'm not good at I I like doing the podcast I like interviewing people Mm. I like being on podcasts and so on um so yeah it's so I'm looking to release it once a week and it's actually a lesson a lesson in there about exceeding expectations because if people if more people, I mean, you know, for most people who are entrepreneurs, we, we started a business because we had a passion about something in particular. Mm. But then we end up having to do everything with business. You know, you're doing the accounts and sales and marketing yeah. and, and all the other things. So if you hire a VA, it frees you up to do what you really enjoy doing. And then you're able to really exceed your customers' expectations in that thing that you're great at. And all that boring stuff you hate, the VA can just take, or the PA or whatever it might be, can yeah. take care of all of yeah. that. Absolutely. And, you know, that, that's something, again, that I would really recommend that people look at and, and start and say, what are the, just, you know, keep a record of what you do all day. Mm. And it's not a hard job, it really isn't, but just keep a record of what you do and tick what you can eliminate, what you can delegate and what you love. Mm. Because some of the stuff actually you can eliminate. But, mm. you know, and find somebody who is good at that detail kind of thing or somebody who's good at technology I've Mm. got someone who does my social media I've now got a bookkeeper years ago I used to do my own books with my own VAT in Mm. handwritten ledger thing that I used to draw lines on this big black book and work out and I think because of my past banking experience because before I was a financial advisor I was in the bank I had to, I absolutely could not leave it until I balanced it to the penny. Mm-hmm. And it used to take me flipping ages. So mm-hmm. that would be, you know, and you're right. It means I can exceed expectations. And I, I have to say that exceeding expectations for me is like, it's just something that I do, that I want to do, because I know that if you exceed expectations today it, it kind of becomes the seed for new opportunities in the future mm. so is it just Im- stand out from the crowd so it's a, it sounds like it's a mindset you've had for quite a while mm. it is it, it, it absolutely is and you know in my own teachings and trainings and workshops and things I talk about 
the uh, you know service because people talk about service and I say service and exceeding expectations doesn't stop when you've made the sale mm. it has to just continue infinitum really mm. it's just not something that stops and I always ask the question how good do you think service is in this country here in the UK do you think it's very bad average or excellent mm. and they say mm, average and below average mm. and I ask why that is and I say well they never seem to be interested in me. So we talk about their experiences, you know, they're never interested in me. And actually, I think the foundation of exceeding expectations is to be genuinely committed to your prospective clients and your clients, and that you understand them, you understand the world in which they operate, you understand the competitors, that you really can can go in and work towards being that trusted expert. Mm. And, and I've got an example of that, if you would like me to share it with you. I would love you to share it, absolutely. Okay. Um, and this is, this is recent, but it's happened many, many times over the years of me running my own business. Um, and it was with a heritage site, and actually it was a referral from someone. It's not generally my... I wouldn't put it on my ideal client list, but mm -hmm. of course, when when you've got an ideal client, you attract those people, but it doesn't stop other people coming and saying, I mm -hmm. know you work with these, but would you do this for me or mm -hmm. for us? And then you've got the choice mm -hmm. as to, you know, whether you want to, to do it or whether the fit's right. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, I went along and met them and they asked me if I would do this initial project, which I did do. And I, I always look at under-promising and over-delivering. Mm. So, for example, if I said, I will get this, um, the, the, my project to you, my proposal to you, mm -hmm. by Friday, so let's say that was a week, mm -hmm. I would get it to them by the Tuesday. Mm -hmm. Right. So everything I try to just over deliver on the other thing that i that i do with every one of my clients is that when we've got to when i've done the discovery and i've found out i've already done my research so i know about them deeply then i go in i have the meeting we have the face-to-face -face meeting and i discover where the challenges are and what they're trying to achieve and all of those things and we get to the point of them deciding to work with me Hmm. I said, before I put a final proposal together, what I would like to do is go and talk to the people that I would be working with. Hmm. Because when I talk to you, the directors, the CEOs, whoever it is, I get a higher, a higher view of hmm. how you see things. When I go and talk to the people who I will be working with, it, it then allows me to have a holistic view. Mm. of the whole situation which allows me to put a project together that is an absolute watertight fit mm. and additionally I can bring you some insights that you may not have been aware of without di um, disclosing any kind of um, without disclosing confidences mm. I can give you some insights that will be valuable to you in mm. terms of looking at other initiatives or other things that you can you can kind of button off or deal with that that you are un unaware of maybe undercurrents and so on and without exception people will say to me this is amazing mm. like amazing so I did this with the heritage site and and went back and had the meeting and gave them the insights and and then went and I said here is what I propose in this project let's work through it together and look at making sure that it's you feel it's the right fit so mm -hmm. that we're doing like a joint um solution mm -hmm. and when you get to the end of it it's just seamless so you've you've brought this additional value you've exceeded their expectations you're working through it together and it's like right okay let's you know they, they said i'll say they'll say to me 
or I may say, when would you like to start? I've looked at my diary and I've got these gaps in my diary that I could, I could start this project for you Mm. because it's important that you work towards your schedule as well. Mm. Otherwise, if you're asking them just directly, when do you want to start and letting them lead it? Sometimes you can be put under a bit of pressure because you've got other things in your diary. Um, so going back to this heritage site, I did mm. the first piece of work, did exactly what I've just explained there. Mm-hmm. The When I do any project work with any company, mm. I put my heart and soul into it. And one of the things I talk about is when they're talking to their clients, the, the, and, and in this case it was visitors because it was a heritage site, you must treat your visitor like they are your one and only today, one and only in that moment. So mm-hmm. you make them feel really special. And it's like, and this is what I said to them, it's like me working with you today. You are my one and only and you will get 100% from me. Mm-hmm. And so the result of all of that was that after that first project, apparently, and I'm sorry if this sounds a little bit boastful, the, they were... Everybody was talking about it. And have you been on this program with Dillis? It's just amazing. And she's running some more and you need to get on it and so on and so forth. Mm. And then I got a call, um, an email actually, from another department in this heritage site asking Mm. me if I would work with their team. Mm. And so I went in and I went through the whole process again. And then I got uh, an email from the director asking me if I would run a leadership program. So I went in and did the whole process again. Mm. And then just two weeks ago, I got a phone call from this director asking me if I would go in um, to their board meeting and Mm. help them work through how to break down the silos in their business. Mm. Now, that is just with exceeding expectations. It's uh, This this is the funniest thing. So um, this director introduced me because, you know, I went in to, to have a meeting about this board meeting mm. and she introduced me to, like, the top man. Mm. You know, I suppose he's the CEO. I didn't even know what his position was, but I just know he was the top man. She mm. said, let me introduce you to Dillis. She said, this is the Dillis. He <laughs> 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 made me laugh. But this is about, this is how you exceed expectations and mm. you become that trusted advisor in the business and people know that you're reliable, that you'll do the things that you say that you're going to do, mm. that you're that you're credible, mm. you know, that you understand the business. Mm. And I didn't really understand the business before I went mm. for the very first meeting. But by gone by the time I got the, before I went, I had research and research and research, and I had as much insight about their business. Mm. than they probably had themselves. Mm. So it's about the reliability, the credibility, being customer focused, doing the things that you're going to that you say you're going to do mm. consistently. Mm. Consistently. It's not just like a hit and miss thing. Mm. You, you when before we started recording, you were telling me about another project which you're going to be doing next week with a, with an education company, I think it was. Again, funnily enough, this was a referral. Mm. Um and this lady got in touch with me and asked me if I would go and help them to uh, and, and work with the, the sales team. But she said, I do have to tell you, you're not the only person that we're talking to. Mm. So we set up this initial meeting, which I have had with her, and we had this really excellent meeting. Mm-hmm. And I knew that I was um, up against some others. So, of course, as I... Just my modus operandi is always to talk to the people that I would be working with. Mm -hmm. So I suggested that I come in and meet the team. But in the meantime, I thought, right, what else can I do that will really... And I didn't think about exceeding expectations. I just thought, what else can I do to bring value to this Mm -hmm. lady? So I wrote to her and I said, just had a thought. Um, Before I come in, I'd like to actually do some research for you on, on your your top four competitors. So if you let me know who they are, I'll do some research. I'll bring it in and share it with you when I come in. Mm. Um, so I don't know yet whether I've won that contract because I'm going in to have the meeting with them next week mm-hmm. armed with 
the this competitor analysis. Mm. And I can't say 100%, but I'd probably say 95 to 99% mm. that the other two people won't have done this. Mm. I hope they're not listening to this podcast. Oh, well, it, it, won't, <laughs> it won't go out before next week, so... <laughs> that's good then (laughs) so so yes it's just thinking about right but but it needs to be come part of the way you think Mm. and I really can't stress this enough it's it's how you operate it's just continuously thinking how can I bring value to my client and you know this is a big mindset thing Mm. and and I talk about this all the time to my uh, salespeople that I work with it's about changing your thought process because your mind will move to the most dominant thought, whether it's positive or negative, and your actions will follow. Mm. And it's, that's just how it is. So if you are thinking when you're about to go in to see a client, oh, how can I get them to say yes today? How can I get them to sign on the dotted line? How can I convince them that we are the best? Mm. If that is your thought process, your actions would be actions of someone who's who's more pushy, mm. who's interested in hitting their targets, and who's got that kind of sleazy kind of way, sales way. And really good professional selling is not about that. Mm. And it's about thinking the exact opposite. It's about thinking, how can I help my client achieve their objectives? Mm. How can I be the trusted advisor to this client and bring additional insights and bring value to their business? How can I help them avoid the pitfalls that I know some of my other clients have gone through? But from my experience, I know I can prevent my clients, you know, being subjected to these issues and pitfalls um, that may come their way Mm. and when you've got that thought process the actions then are all client focused it's genuine you really mean it Mm. you're not pretending you've changed your thought process and it's that that makes that big difference Mm. well it's i mean the the passion shines through to and A question I usually ask at the end, and you've kind of almost, you touched upon it earlier in one of your answers about your just general thoughts on why people maybe should consider over delivering as a, as a a mindset or as a a strategy. What Mm. what, what are your thoughts? Well, I would say that if I, if I put this, if I kind of encapsulated and here it is in the nutshell, I guess, Exceeding expectations is something that needs to be a daily habit in everything that you do. Mm. Everything. It needs to be in your thought process. It needs to be in your actions. So your thought process needs to be around that. How can I exceed expectations so that it allows those actions to happen? Mm. Absolutely. Well, Dillis, if people want to find out more about you, where where's the best places for them to look? Well, they can have a look um, at my um, on my website first of all, which is www.dillisguyan.com. Mm-hmm. and I spell that as this is audio. It's D Y L I S Dillis Guyan G U Y A N. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's dillisguyan.com mm-hmm. they could join my facebook group my free facebook group to help them to increase those corporate sales mm-hmm. and that's inspired selling on mm-hmm. facebook i'd be delighted to have them come and join us look for my uh, podcast which mm-hmm. is inspired selling mm-hmm. i'm also on youtube dillis guyan um and you can also, there's, I've got a free download. It's not about exceeding expectations, but it's um, if they go to my website, they will find it on the home page, and it's a free download, 21 Surefire Ways to Find Your Ideal Client. Fantastic. And that talks about where to find the clients and how to profile your clients to see to, to help you to identify who your ideal client is, first of all, and then those 21 ways to find them. 
fantastic. Well, I really appreciate your time, Phyllis. It's been um, great the information you shared with us and, um, and best of luck for your business in the future. Thank you very much, Tony. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much for inviting me. It really has been great. Thank you. Next week, episode 42 of Exceeding Expectations is with a lady called Eve Dawes, originally from Essex, but she's been living in Nevada in the States for quite a long time now. And she's a a fitness professional and a former professional dancer. She now has her own range of cosmetics and uh, gymnasiums as well. And she helps people in a number of different ways around the whole subject of health and wellness. So that's next week with Eve Dawes. There's some quite interesting things to say. Hope you've enjoyed this week's show and hope you have a great week. See you next Tuesday.